Welcome to Movie Recalled. In this video we are going to explain Leave Them Kids Alone episode. Let's get started. Veronica Vanderhall is a 14-year-old school student who has a rebellious nature, and I don't give a frick attitude. She never pays attention to her professors or parents and she frequently gets into disputes with her pals, and consistently receives the lowest marks. Veronica was not always this way, though. She was a brilliant, fun, loving, intelligent and caring girl who was one of the class toppers up until a year ago. However, she made some new pals throughout the summer and learned about environmental issues like global warming, deforestation and so on. Veronica is currently a tough vegan. Additionally, she organizes frequent demonstrations at her school against the use of plastic, animal products, and other things that she is strongly opposed to. Even her professors, pupils, and her parents are tired of her pranks. Veronica, though, doesn't really give a break. She is adamant about imposing her beliefs on other pupils, whether they want it or not. Unluckily for her, she receives a call to the principal's office and is given a lecture about her poor performance and bad attitude. She is still acting clever and not paying attention so principal suspends Veronica for an indeterminate amount of time. Finally, the arrogant kid understands the seriousness of the circumstance and makes an attempt to apologize, but it's too late. The principal has decided what she wants to do in advance and won't back down from it. When Veronica gets home, her parents had to give her another lecture. They describe how she has undergone a total transformation in the past year and how, on some times, they feel as though their daughter has been kidnapped and replaced by an imposter. Also mentioned by the parents is how Veronica used to spend time with them, play with them, and even cuddle up to them at night. She is no longer the same person she once was. Then Veronica's father pulls out a brochure of a certain institution named Miss Genevieve School for Difficult Girls, which reportedly specialized in correcting young women who exhibit socially awkward behavior. Veronica takes a good look at the pamphlet and says that she doesn't want to go. However her parents help her realize that she doesn't really have many options. They take their daughter to Miss Genevieve's school for challenging girls the next day. The main structure has a gothic appearance and the principal of the school is none other than Miss Genevieve. Additionally, each pupil has the same unsettling haircut, giving the impression that they are not normal. After some time, Miss Genevieve meets with Veronica's parents to promise them that she will discipline their daughter and return her home in a few months. She also admits that she has straightened more than a thousand girls while working here. Miss Genevieve consistently finds a way to assist children, regardless of how disobedient or haughty they are. In the meantime, Veronica's mother finally asks why every girl at the school has the same haircut. Miss Genevieve responds with a nasty tone their hairstyle is only an extension of their uniform, which stands for simplicity, obedience and honesty. She claims that a child's mind is like a sponge, and the girls get here already immersed in harmful behaviors. She only needs to squeeze them slightly. Just then a girl named Heather Corbett arrives and Miss Genevieve introduces her as Veronica's roommate. Heather promptly impresses over Mr. and Mrs. Vanderhall by pleasantly greeting them, but quickly she whispers something into Miss Genevieve's ears. It turns out that she reported Veronica for chewing gum inside the school, which is completely restricted. Miss Genevieve points out the regulation and instructs Veronica to remove the gum, but the latter expresses her liberty by attaching it to a nearby pole. Veronica's parents eventually leave, and Heather leads her to their room. It is a dark and gloomy looking room which consists of only two beds, a table and an alarm clock. Heather offers to assist Veronica as she unpacks, but is respectfully rejected. Then, Veronica chastises her for earlier ratting her out. Additionally, she tells Heather to stop the performance because their spooky principal is no longer present. However, to her amazement Heather explains that she is only following the rules and that she will do so until they are inside the school's grounds. Weird out by her actions, Veronica decides to chill by playing some music on her MP3 speaker, but Heather still steps in. She immediately turns off the speaker and tells Veronica that music is not permitted here. She also mentions before departing that she will soon get a new haircut from Mr. Welsh. The next morning, Veronica is woken up sharp at 5 a.m. by a combination of the alarm clock and Heather. Still sleepy, she gets dressed in her school uniform and heads to the canteen where all the girls are chatting and eating their breakfast. The odd part is that none of them are laughing and shouting like normal girls their age would normally do. They also appear to be dull and lethargic, as if they are robots. When Veronica approaches the counter to get food, she discovers that they only offer sausage and bacon. She will now need to leave her vegan diet as a result of this. The action then shifts to the history lesson where a male instructor named David is detailing several historical instances where kids defied their parents and were punished. It turns out that every class at this school is intended to brainwash the students into being submissive and nice. 
Veronica interrupts David by saying that the information is completely wrong and that kids have every right to be rude, because of how immature and carefree they are at that age. Since this is the first time a student has disputed their teacher, the entire class is shocked upon hearing this. David, on the other hand, soothes them by saying that Veronica would soon learn to be courteous. Before the class ends he also asks her why she hasn't got haircut yet. Veronica is soon walking around the playground when Miss Genevieve calls her into her office. When she arrives, she notices Mr. Welsh, the barber, waiting for her. Unexpectedly, he begins measuring her head and even inquires about her age, which is clearly unnecessary for a haircut. After taking down all the information, Mr. Welsh says he won't be able to schedule a haircut appointment until at least the following week because he will be quite busy in the coming days. But when Miss Genevieve demands, he postpones one appointment and says he'll trim Veronica's hair the next day. Veronica is beginning to understand that there is a serious issue with her school. They don't even have iPads so that the teachers don't have to do that their jobs. As a result, at midnight, while her roommate is sleeping, she gathers her things and gets ready to left the school. But as soon as she exits through the main door, a fellow student called Claire stops her and warns her that it is difficult to leave the building. The school is surrounded by electric gates, and many guards are on constant watch along the route. Following this the two introduce themselves and Clary takes Veronica to her room. There, she shows her drawings of two former students who, according to the illustrations, attempted to escape but were caught. Even though they had predicted every move the guards would make, they were still spotted. Next the disclosure, Clary informs Veronica that she only has a short window of time because her haircut is set for the following day. She asserts that the haircut transforms the students into lifeless automatons. All of this is obviously confusing Veronica, so Clary proceeds to demonstrate something for her. She leads her through a secret tunnel and soon they reach a room where Miss Genevieve, Mr. Welsh and another student are present. The student, who is tied to a chair, starts begging for her release, but Miss Genevieve remains unaffected. All she only adds, don't worry, my child, you'll be nice in no time. Saying this she then commands Dr. Welsh, the barber, to start the procedure. He places a bizarre helmet on the terrified, bound student's head and begins cutting her hair as she cries in fear. After some time, both her hairstyle and her behavior changed. The girl who was rebellious, arrogant and rude just few minutes ago has now become calm and polite. Veronica, who is observing with Clary from a distance, now understands how the students are straightened in this situation. Meanwhile Clary reveals that she broke her skull as a youngster and that a metal plate had to be placed within it as a safety measure. When she had a haircut last year, this plate evidently prevented her from becoming one of those uninteresting pupils. Later, when the two chat further, Clary explains why she doesn't want to leave. She and her sister both came up to the school on the same day, but only she kept her sense of reason. She now worried that Miss Genevieve will hurt her sister if she goes out alone. After hearing all of this, Veronica makes a commitment to develop a strategy to free all pupils from the spell that is creating them. The next day morning at the canteen, she tries to provoke the pupils to be rebellious by whistling, but ends up getting reprimanded by Miss Genevieve. During their conversation, Veronica unintentionally reveals that she and Clary witnessed the haircut session of a fellow pupil. Miss Genevieve becomes angry by this and she decides to make Veronica different the following night. A few hours later, Veronica rushes to Clary's room out of fear, only to discover that she has gotten a brand new haircut. It turns out that Miss Genevieve approached Clary and removed the metal plate from her skull after Veronica unintentionally revealed that they were spying on Mr. Welsh the other night. She also gave Clary a haircut. She has become emotionless and uninteresting like the other classmates. With this, Veronica's lone chance of leaving the miserable school is gone. Later, she sleeps in her bed waiting for Miss Genevieve to take her away to transform her forever. In the meantime, her roommate Heather shows up and says they should leave because it's time for supper. Veronica, however, is not in the mood. Instead, she switches the conversation about her childhood days where she used to be happy and didn't care a bit about what's happening in the world. She continues by inquiring of Heather what it's like to have a routine, but Heather didn't understand. Despite this, Veronica decides to give her roommate a parting gift. She pulls out her MP3 speaker and gave it to Heather, who has been silent during the discussion. In the background, some static noises can be heard, implying that Heather is trying to recall her past experiences. She suddenly hits a speaker button, and a pop-up song begins to play. Heather experiences tremendous pain in her ears but after a while she finally gets calmed down. She has, surprisingly, recovered her mentality as well as every memory she had before to the haircut. She actually doesn't know how she got into this institution. Veronica is overjoyed because she has at last discovered a remedy to heal the sick students. So she doesn't waste any time and gets to work planning something with Heather. After a while, she goes to Miss Geneve's office and eventually states that she is prepared for the haircut. The two then head proceed to Mr. Welsh's barber shop, but on the way, 
Veronica suddenly adopts an insulting attitude toward Miss Geneve. At the same time she tells her roommate to start their plan. Heather, who is actually in Miss Geneve's office, pulls out the MP3 speaker and put it right next to a microphone. As soon as she turns on the speaker, the school's announcement systems begin to play the same pop music that was playing previously. At first, the music has a massive effect on every pupil, but soon they start acting like they're genuine personalities. After a year, Clary, who is in the canteen, reconciles with her sister. In the last scene all the girls come out onto the playground, screaming and having fun like ordinary youngsters. Miss Geneve tries to order them back inside their rooms, but they refuse Genevieve's order. The girls are now wild and carefree as they should be because the spell has been broken. The movie ends as all of the students, including Veronica, Heather and Clary run to the school's exit gate.